Good morning, my fellow Tottenham fans, near and far, spread out right across the globe. And happy Monday morning to you all. Now, they usually say Monday morning is the worst day of the week because everyone is settling back into the mundane routines of life. However, for Tottenham fans, there should be an air of excitement in the air this Monday morning as you can let your imagination run wild to the possibilities of what this season has in store for Tottenham because Tottenham are back. Yes, you guessed it. It's that time of the year again where Tottenham undertake their pre-season preparations for the upcoming season as Spurs gear up for our second campaign under Ange Postacoglu. And I know many Spurs fans and Ange himself will be hoping that there is a lot less disruption this pre-season as last season's pre-season was cut short due to monsoon season in Singapore. So today, we're going to take a look at everything you need to know for Tottenham's pre-season this summer. Now, Tottenham have lined up a string of friendlies to prepare for the team this season, six in total. And it starts this Wednesday as Spurs embark on a friendly up in Scotland to take on Hearts on the 17th and then travel back down to London for a friendly three days later against QPR on the Saturday before jetting out to Japan and Korea for the pre-season tour. Those involved at the the Euros and Copa America will be missing to begin with before they start filtering back into the squad over the next couple of weeks. So it is worth noting for the first two friendlies against Hearts and QPR, we're not going to have a full squad available to us. What I think you'll see these two games used for against Hearts and QPR, firstly, is to look at some of the under-21 players, the likes of Hall, Donnelly, Mikey Moore, and decide who can cut it in Ange Postacoglu system and who can't. It's one thing looking at them in training, but it's another looking at them in a match scenario, how they look in the system, how they take the tactics on board, and can they ultimately do what Ange Postacoglu was asking them to do? So I think we'll use these games, especially to have a look at that and decide who will be kept around to fill out the squad and who will be sent out on loan to further their development. The second thing, players on the periphery of the squad last season, I think Ange Postacoglu will probably have one last look at them and decide who can still offer value into what Ange is trying to build and who does not? And lastly, integrate new signings, Archie Gray and Lucas Bergvall, and see what they look like in Ange Postacoglu's system. And it's also a good opportunity for Ange to look at Bergvall and Archie Gray in multiple positions to see what suits them best within this system heading into the new season. And ultimately... These three things will help Hans Postacoglu make up his mind on certain individuals and shape and mould his squad before they fly out to Japan and Korea for the pre-season tour. Those who are left at home will be because of injury and Tottenham and Ange Postacoglu will probably feel it's better for them to further their recovery at Hotspur Way or they are not a part of Ange Postacoglu's plans going forward and be left at home to find a move elsewhere. I would also like Ange Postacoglu to be a bit more cutthroat with his pre-season squad selection this season. Last season heading out to Singapore, we brought a large squad with us, players that didn't really need to go. The likes of Endombele, Dyer, Sanchez, who were never going to be a part of Postacoglu's plans going forward, all ultimately ended up going out on a tour. And it was a wasted experiment because you're bringing a bloated squad and you're having to focus on all of these individuals rather than having a reduced squad and just working with the players that are going to be a part of your mind master plan going forward. So I'd like to see Ange be a lot more cutthroat and reduce that squad drastically and just work with the players that have a future at this club and send out a message to the players that will be left at home and ultimately to the board as well to get them off the books and get them out of here. Tottenham start the tour of Asia with a return to Japan for the first time in 33 years looking to capitalise on Ange Postacoglu's popularity out there after his stint managing Yokohama Marinos. Tottenham will start by playing reigning J1 League champions Vizel Koba at the Japan National Stadium on Saturday the 27th of July while also meeting with three official Spurs supporters clubs in the country, Japan Spurs, Kobe Spurs and Osaka Spurs. And I'm absolutely delighted for these supporters clubs. It's not every day Tottenham are out there touring and it's good that the club are taking the chance to be able to build relations with their Spurs fan base worldwide. And it'd be absolutely great. They'll probably get to meet some of the players, probably get to meet the likes of Sonny and Postacoglu. Spurs will then make the short trip across to South Korea to compete in the Kopang Play Series 2024. And the day before the first friendly on the 30th of July, the team 
team will take part in an open training session at the Seoul World Cup Stadium. And I presume it would probably be televised on some of the Spurs media channels. If anyone remembers back to about two years ago underneath Antonio Conte, he used this opportunity to run the legs off the players. And we've seen images of players getting sick. Probably won't see anything to the same degree, but it'll be interesting to see how Ange Postacoglu puts the team through their paces to meet his high octane style of play. And the following evening, the first fixture of the Copang Play Series, Tottenham will take on Team K League on Wednesday, the 31st of July, who we previously played out there in 2022, winning 6 3. And then Tottenham will end the series with a game against Bar Munich on Saturday, the 3rd of August. Now, a couple of things on this tour before we get into that last game against Bar Munich. One thing I think is that Tottenham hopefully have learned lessons from their previous tour out there in 2022. Sun came back from that tour absolutely shattered and wasn't right for at least six months heading into the season because it looked like he was fatigued. And I absolutely understand that Sun is a superstar out in South Korea. They love and adore him. However... He took on too much last time he was out there. Not only, and rightly so, did he give a lot of time to his followers, to his fans who turned up everywhere in their droves, in their thousands, everywhere he went to get pictures and autographs, which rightly so, I'm delighted to see him take time for that. But not only that, sponsors out in South Korea for the club and personally for him, the media out there for South Korea and for the club, they almost just got Son to do absolutely everything for them. He was the face of that tour. And ultimately, he ended up coming back to Tottenham Hotspur shattered. And he wasn't right for at least six months heading into that season. And we can't put ourselves into that same scenario again, especially now that Son carries the main burden of that attack and front line. We really need him to be able to hit the ground running and be ready for the start of the season. Because as Postacoglu himself has said, he wants to challenge for titles. And Son is absolutely front and centre of that, especially up in the forward line. So hopefully the club manage his workload a lot better than what they did last time around. The second thing I think this tour should be useful for is the likes of Bentecourt, Madison and Solomon, who all carried massive injuries last season. In some cases, Solomon's case and Bentecourt's case missing most of the season and Madison missing a fair chunk of the season. And they all come into this season under a little bit of scrutiny. People questioning, can Bentecourt shake off his injury and get back to the player that he once was? And we also need him in that midfield because before he went injured, he was our best midfielder. We need a bit more dominance in that midfield. We need a bit more flair in that midfield. And it's something that Bentecourt can certainly provide and help us going forward. Plus, creating a lot more competition for places, which should keep everybody else around them on their A game. Also, for the likes of Monar Solomon, who promised so much when we got our first glimpses of him in the Spurs shirt, to going back to being injured. And that was one of many people's concerns when we signed him, is his actual availability. He carried a huge injury at Fulham the season before, and another one for Spurs last season. And ultimately, wasn't really able to affect much for Spurs over the course of the campaign. And many would argue... This will probably be his last chance to prove his fitness and show what he can offer to Tottenham Hotspur. And then on to Madison, who was very disappointing when he came back from his injury, which of course led him to being left out of England's 2024 squad and the run at the Euros. And no doubt he'll come back hopefully with an appetite. All these guys will probably want to get a full preseason underneath their belt and Madison will want to go out there and hit the ground running and show what he can offer to England ahead of the World Cup in two years time. Third thing I think this preseason tour will be useful for is Ange Postacoglu and the fans. I know that many fans were left concerned towards the end of the season with the form of Tottenham and the amount of goals we conceded and questioning why we leave our two centre-backs so exposed. So it'll be very interesting to see whether Ange Postacoglu has a tactical plan to navigate get that and I think that's what many Spurs fans want to see whether that's getting the six to play a lot more of a disciplined role and not go forward or one of the fullbacks to maybe sit in and play a bit more of a disciplined role but also to see if Ange Postacoglu especially on my behalf can solve the issues going forward last season we were very mundane moving the ball side to side a bit like in the shape of a horse show without taking many risks and without creating a lot one thing in my lifetime at Tottenham Hotspur We've been very exciting to watch going forward. And although we control possession in the opposition half, we lack that creative and that cutting edge in the final third that we need to really go on a challenge for what Postacoglu wants this season, which he said, again, is trophies. So it'll be interesting to see whether he has a plan for that as well this season. And then lastly, there's a couple of players heading into this tour where their positions are left unclear. The likes of Lucas Bergvall 
Is Postacoglu going to play him in the six, the eight, or the ten? Where is he best suited? I think coming off the back of preseason tour, especially towards the end of it, I think that will be made a lot more clearer. Archie Gray, is he suited to an eight, a six, or a right back as deputy to Pedro Porro? So I think that will be also made a lot clearer coming out of the preseason tour. But also one that I find interesting is Dejan Kulazeski who was tried out in multiple positions on the ranch post Coglu last season. And fair play to him. He tried his best and gave his all in every single one without actually nailing down or looking good in any of the positions. He had a real poor campaign last season. It'll be interesting to see whether post Coglu still sees him as a right winger, whether he sees him as a calm playing through the middle like he gave him opportunities at last season. Or, lastly, is he going to be the guy to go up front and compete with Richardson against Luton when we went down to 10 men at their place last season Kulazeski was sensational up front holding up the ball getting Tottenham up the field and relieving pressure on the back line but also the last game of the season against Sheffield United where he banged in two goals very Harry Kane-esque using his size his body to hold off players and gain that half a yard to be able to get his shot off so it'd be interesting to see where Ange Postacoglu sees Kulazeski heading into next season and then lastly Tottenham will then host Bayern Munich at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium on Saturday, August the 10th, in the Visit Malta Cup as their final friendly before the Premier League action kicks off against Leicester, where Spurs fans get to reunite with Harry Kane and Eric Dyer. Personally, not me. I'm not going to have any affection towards that game. Didn't like Dyer at Tottenham Hotspur. But also, Harry Kane rejected my love and my hair advice. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please give me your thoughts on all the questions that I've threw out there, all the hyperboles that I've threw out there in the comment section below. Please give me your thoughts on that. Lastly, please smash a like. And if you're new to the channel, smash the subscribe button and help us on our journey to 15,000 subscribers. Guys, I'm excited. Let me know how excited you are. Come on, you Spurs. In the mighty hands we trust, we never stop.